Chicago Bulls fans, with Jalen Brown just receiving that crazy Supermax money, we here to let y'all know <laughs> Zach Levine deal is a bargain. And then we're going to touch on Grant Williams. He was almost a Chicago Bulls. We're going to talk about it. But you know you got to hit a music first. Cognac. Gang. podcast with the cognac boys i'm cognac boy bobby and i'm with my dog c dub how you doing what nephew back what's the word fully what's the word if y'all like what y'all listening to today hit the like button subscribe to the channel we almost at 4k so share this with somebody that might enjoy it hey we just we heard earlier you know yesterday that Jalen Brown signed a signed a contract, Supermax contract, five five years, three hundred and four million dollars. First year of that contract, my man's will be making fifty two million dollars, and by the end of it, the last year he will be earning sixty nine million dollars. See, dub, we kind of talked about it, but can we explain how Zach Levine deal looks like a bargain now? <laughs> Damn, 300 million dollars bro 304 million dollars he said i need four more million put that on my <laughs> damn contract bro. <laughs> but anyway when it pertains to zach levine we just got us a bargain what 215 215 and guess, and guess what zach do zach guess what zach do better than Jalen brown average more points per game and he got a better true shooting percentage it's a Jalen Brown younger. Jalen Brown is a little bit younger than Zach Levine. But yeah. when you look at things from a different lens, it's the same lens, same eyeglasses. Bro, we got a bargain, bro. We got a freaking bargain because I think Zach Levine and Jalen Brown are just about the same level, bro. So if y'all bitching about paying Zach 215, just be glad this ain't the time when his contract was supposed to be signed. Because you see what a basketball inflation is going. 300 and up. Now, what all the, 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 the primetime players looking at Jay Lebr- What? Are y'all giving? Oh, Steph, like, I don't know if Steph will see another contract like that. Maybe. But all those good Zion and those players, 300 mil? That's crazy. I know Jordan was underpaid. Kobe was underpaid. Shaq was underpaid. All them, all them veterans and OGs looking like, oh my God, you must be kidding me, bro. Yeah, yeah, he ain't even won a championship yet, bro. That's oh, great. Bro. Bro. I mean, some people like, like the way I look at it is that Zach Levine deal is a bargain. Like some people will take Zach Levine first. Some people will take Jalen Brown. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be mad if you elect to take Jalen Brown over Zach Levine. That's your opinion. I respect it. Simply because, man, he didn't been to the Eastern Conference Finals several times. Zach Levine has not. He J- Jalen Brown has even been to the finals. Can't be mad at you. Can't be mad at you if you was going to elect and take that. But to be honest with you, do we really think this deal gonna pan out? Because now with these guys with the new CBA and the new strap holes and new luxury tax aprons and all this stuff being added on is just make things that much more difficult. But I had a conversation with Steve Owen Hayes on NBA Central. Make sure y'all go over and check that out. Uh, yesterday, we talked about how the cap is kind of just going to be it's gonna be top heavy with your stars, even if they're not superstars. And then it's just going to be filling out with some guys that's going to be taking minimal contracts. And we already seen what the Boston Celtics have done, what they look like. But have they really lived up to all the expectations of winning a championship? As of right now, I will say no, because they should have been able to close that deal at least one time. That's just a personal opinion. But they have had way more success, I will give y'all that, than said a Zach Levine. And you can even make an argument that Jalen Brown has been a better playoff performer than his co-star, Jason Tatum. So it's fair. But the deal that Zach Levine got, still, still, <laughs> still. is definitely a steal. <laughs> 
Whether like that, there were some people questioning it, saying that Zach Levine he got paid too much. But this right here, this thing just lets you all know there's a market for stars. Sometimes that all star player can go ahead and get a super max. And it's a different because I don't see Jalen Brown as a superstar, but I would uh, certainly put him in that star category. Hence why this deal now looks so much good for Zach Levine for the Bulls to lock him up as early as they did. Jalen Brown about to make more money than the Joker who just won and is a two time MVP. Was in a conversation for the third MVP, but Joel and B cried. And I, was, <laughs> I, I was on Joel and B side for a moment. And then I was like, nah, it should have went to the problem, yo, bro. <laughs> Joe, this is this is real funny, man. You, these players is gonna be getting contracts over 300 that 300 million dollars, bro. What you say he's gonna make in his last year? 60 mil, 69 mil. 69 million dollars. That's in crazy. His last money, year of his bro. contract. That's crazy. Is that is 69 million more than what a player like Tim Hardaway made his whole career? Probably. Is that a is it more than a player like Mike Bibby made his entire career? Oh, yeah, this, this is crazy, bro. They throwing out that change now. I did hear what you said, uh, it's gonna be top heavy, and then you know, you fill in the rest of the pieces. I wonder how the rest of the players feel about that. I is it's is, is, I mean, wait, 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 how would you feel if if you just throwing all the money at the top and you just get all the leftovers and you contribute contributing to that's a big I'm CPS <laughs> to the success of the team I How mean you I look at it like this bro I look at my example that I mentioned yesterday with on NBA Central I'm gonna mention it right here look at the Phoenix Suns they top four Aiden Booker KD Bill everybody making 30 mil and over and everybody else, they filling out. They just, you know, three million here, two million here, one million there. And not to be honest, most of them guys are like, hey, if I can come in, be a star in my role, I can go ahead and win the ultimate prize that everybody want to win. That's the championship. And they, some guys probably they can feel like they can make more money in other avenues. You know, advertisement, doing podcasting, their name, image, and likeness per se. You know what I'm saying? So some guys, they won't be mad because you still, to me, you still will have those uh, Grant Williams type of contracts where you get a decent little amount. Or for us, a Kobe White contract to where you're not getting a minimum, but you damn sure getting way, you know what I'm saying? Because if yeah. Eric Gordon got $3 million, Kobe White getting eleven, you can't be mad at that. You make it three times more, this, more than this guy. So, you know what I'm saying? And plus some of those guys, they, they, they might have a little more, you know, dirt and you know, experience on the court and it, the career just ain't paying out how they want it to be. So they now just trying to compete for championships. Can't be mad at that. You're still rich at the end of the day. Most still people rich. won't even make a million dollars in their entire lifetime. Yeah, you're it's right crazy. about that, nephew. But I want to talk about uh, human nature. Like, after success, uh, what else is there to do but envy the next man and get mad at what you ain't got? You know what I'm saying? So, I don't think this type of business will work in the NBA. I just think it's, it's kind of wacky, bro. Everybody at the top making all this money, and you a mid level. And I just say you 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 just filling out the filling out the roster. Say you a mid level, you a Bruce Brown or something. He just got a bag though. But just take this into context, Bruce Brown. You a mid level. Hey man, can you take this five mil? Because we got to pay these other top four people at the top. I mean, it is a business. You can say like no and, and be a free agent, but. I just think it's unfair. It ain't going to work for long for a long time, bro. It is. I mean, it depends on how you're looking at it because that's a fair point. You're looking at it like, hey, I'm just as good as them or some of the good other players around the league. Why you want me to take a, a big pay cut, especially if I'm still a young guy? But I look at it like this. It's a hierarchy to this shit. It's role players, all-stars, and superstars. And you can compare that to the CEO at the top Versus the guy that's going to go out and push the boxes on the FedEx truck. The CEO going to see the top dollars because he come with the most experience. He the star player. And the person that's pushing the boxes on the FedEx truck, he might be new there. He might ain't got the, the, the same talent that the CEO got or the same business acumen that the CEO at the top. So if you're looking at how why Kevin Durant getting paid so much, and then you look at Watanabe, 
and why he getting paid so little compared to that you got to look at those factors in my opinion that's just me yeah you gotta yeah, look I at feel it. You. yeah i feel you but I, I still got my doubts out of it uh, they're gonna have to they're gonna pick it all the bench players and role players gonna go boycott and just walk off the floor <laughs> nah them, nah the boys ain't turning down that money though because if they called That's you a lot up of red, money, if they called you up right now see dub we got a spot for you come play guard we're gonna give you the vet minimum three million you going to play <laughs> hey, 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 let me say this though. Hey, hey, hey I'm gonna go play nephew, but after I do successes, I'm gonna kill, right? That's all good. I'm gonna I'm go crazy up there. After we win like a couple ships, I'm be like, nah, all right, it's my turn now. You're gonna, you okay. gonna jump ship and go get your payday. That's how some guys might feel. That's why most of these guys do one year vet minimums, or they do a two year deal with a player option in a second year, and then you be good to go. Okay, I feel you. I'm and then they go, they they do a Bruce Brown. I'm gonna sign this one year deal with Denver Nuggets. Go win me a championship, achieve the the ultimate goal of playing in the NBA. And now it's time to secure my future. Let me get this bag up at you. Oh, bro. And that's why, they, don't bro. That's why they can't sustain. That's why we'll never see a dynasty. I don't think the, the dynasty thing is done at the Golden State because of the money thing. Like, look, in I your case of Bruce that. Brown, but Bruce Brown, what, if you, just hear me out, Bruce Brown. He's a very key P. He has some big shots against the Miami Heat, bro. I don't know if they win a couple of those games without Bruce Brown's big shot making. Now he leave and go for the bag instead of staying with the, here come that C word, continuity with the Denver Nuggets. It, it, how can you sustain a, a, a team? So you think, so you betting on Braun, the, 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 the yes. German guy, to yes. come in and just fill his shoes, but he ain't the yes. same guy. He ain't don't the matter. Same guy. You don't need him to be the same guy because now they already didn't. They uh, acquired more draft picks since we're talking about the Denver Nuggets. They acquired more draft picks, and now you can just find the, the void because you still got most. You got your core still there. That's how Golden State was able to sustain it. The core was still there. Man, you need more. Than, I, I I feel you. What you're saying, if I think you need more than your core, bro. You need your Bruce Browns. You need your Al Horfords. You need your 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 Bogdanovich. You need your your Robert Orries, bro. You need them, and you, you need do. to respect them by paying paying them equal share, bro. Not not like equal payment, like you get the same as a as a Kobe Bryant or something. But you need Talking to pay fair, them a fair the, value. Fair, pay, pay, fair value, bro. I get it, but at the same time. <laughs> these guys gonna be in there trust me they gonna <laughs> be replaceable bro the core is intact but the end of the day back on topic that was just a little <laughs> give it a thoughts to talk about some more basketball because we so happy about basketball getting ready to roll around the bears they finna get ready and kick shit off today <laughs> you know what i'm saying no. but uh let us know how y'all feeling about that zach levine uh you did y'all agree with us or disagree is it a bargain is it a like are you now happy that he got 215 versus three of it? Y'all should be happy. Let us know down in the comments. But a little quick topic before we go. C-Dub, Grant Williams said that he was almost a Chicago Bull. He said that, look, he has some people out there. Dallas was in there. Atlanta was in there. New York was in there. But we came down to Dallas being more aggressive. You got anything you want to add on to that? Did the Bulls miss an opportunity or we good? I think we both missed out. I think the Bulls missed out, and I think he missed out because I think he would have been a better uh, – I think this would have been a better situation for him. In right. Dallas, he's going to be sitting his ass in the corner and playing defense. That's <laughs> that's what your game is going to be. You got Kyrie, you got Luka. Over here, you you at least get some plug, bro, because we need somebody that can create baskets. And I think you're pretty good creating your own shot. So, hey, man, good luck in Dallas sitting in the fucking corner all fucking I mean, but that's what he was known for in Boston. So it's really no big of a change. He's a tough guy that's coming there, mostly defend, occasionally hit a three. I really don't see him get trying to be no playmaker, bro. He ain't about to be, nah. So it is what it is. Sometimes you hit on these free agent signings, and sometimes you don't. And it's just one that they didn't hit on. Because if they, yeah, hey, to be honest with you, if they was able to get Javon Carter, Torrey Craig, and Grant Williams, that would have been awesome. You ain't gonna hit on all your, your offers. Yeah, uh Grant Williams, though, man. I, I think he I think any basketball player, if you a hooper, let's just say this, nephew. If I tell you 
man, you go play pro, but man, you gonna sit your ass in the corner, though. We we just need you space to flow. You like that? Is that fun? I mean, you no. hoop, if you a hooper, you it's you not. Know, I'm a hooper. Not. That ain't me. I ain't finna sit in no corner, bro. It's not. It's not. But at the same time, we gotta stick to what our what our rules is. Find your niche. His niche is D up and shoot threes. We can't go back on that, huh? We can't go back on that. That's his thing. Hey, he better not complain because he know what Dallas win? is. <laughs> no, bro, do he want to win? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Dallas gonna win? <laughs> I ain't saying they, bro. They definitely gonna. I think. I think they got a chance to make the playoffs at least. But the favors is still gonna be Denver, the defending champs. Absolutely. But that's a that's right. a topic for NBA Central. How would Y'all Grant Williams? It? How would how would <laughs> how would Grant Williams look at with the Chicago Bulls? So how you think he would have fit? I mean, he I think he would have just been like an Alice Caruso type player. Come in, do a little bit of everything and go home. No, <laughs> bro. Be productive <laughs> in other areas and go home. I don't I, I didn't expect I like even if he was here or in Dallas or even in Boston, he's not gonna have this huge role to where he's gonna be like, Yeah, he's the de facto guy who has to put up 15, 20 points per night. No, he's a guy that you're gonna be like, all right, go in, stick defense, do all the dirty work. And help us, you know, get some opportunities to put the ball in the basket a few more times and let's get some stops. That's his role. That's his niche. We got to stick to that. I th- I would have I would have loved to have another dog on this team. I think we got uh more tough during the offseason. We got some toughness with Tory Craig and J- Javon Carter, but that would have that would have been overkill with, yeah. with Grant Agreed. Williams. I think that would agree. A longest bro would have never said, I'm gonna make both. I'd have said, damn. <laughs> he better stop talking to Jimmy Butler. That's what he better stop doing. <laughs> he, time, he told Donovan Mitchell, I'm going to make both. I'm going to make both. And miss both. both. <laughs> you can't both. miss both. <laughs> hey, when he started talking, he fuck up, bro. As soon as you start talking, you start fucking up. Grand Williams, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's level to this. Everybody can't talk. You know, but I yeah, give him bro. I give him kudos. He still came out of talk. <laughs> you like Grand yeah. Williams, nephew. You like him. I do. Like I don't want him. Like, like, I like I like tough guys, bro. Guys that's gonna but, okay. come in, do what he got to do. I don't think okay. he. I think he's solid. I wouldn't say he's so great, you, but he's is not he, trash either. He's solid. Is, is he seeing his ceiling? Is he seeing his peak? That's as best as he's gonna be. Is a spot up three and D player. Probably, yeah. That's, that's, that's his that's niche, sad, bro. That's sad. No, it's not. It's okay. We talk about niches. Yes. No, but it's he's not. A young player. What? So what? Man, no, Joe. I'm a so hooper, bro. What? I want to stand in the corner, bro. Ain't no motherfucker want to stand in the corner, nephew. Excuse my language. But I don't want to stand in the corner, bro. If you a hooper, you want to want some action too, bro. You, you want do. some action. You do. But at the same time, the principles that we have been establishing is find your niche and be great at it. You're right. Well, well right. like, okay, one of the guys that we like, Seth Curry. He, for the most part, he's a three-point shooter, right? For the most part. Yeah. Have you mm-hmm. seen him do things? You'd be like, oh, shit, that's different. Of course. Every player going to yeah. do that. Yeah. But his niche, get your ass in this corner or get behind a three-point <laughs> line in your hot spot and shoot this three. What's wrong with that? Everybody that's can't it. be. Everybody can't be the star. Hey, is everybody got a role in this movie or in this episode, as we call each game. That's an episode for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-hour episode. <laughs> The movie is the 82-game season with the playoffs and the championship. That's the movie. The episode is one game. So for this one episode, Grant Williams, get you behind in the corner and do what Jason Kidd tell you to do. And then on the defensive side, let's communicate. Let's be a dog. Let's get down and dirty and do what you do best. Easy. What's wrong with that? You got your Williams standing in the corner then. You good. Nah, see, that's different. You ain't make good. What you mean? You you telling me that no. No, no, no. Why not, nephew? Because P. Will, he has a game that we've seen that he can use. I've never seen Grant Williams bring the ball up and initiate offense or even let alone drop 32 in the game. I don't know. He probably has. I know he has. I I think it was one year he had like a crazy three-point shooting output in the playoffs. The year they went to the finals, I believe, he went hot. He got hot. But guess what he was standing at? The three-point line. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen with guys on his team like a Jason Tatum and a Jalen Brown. For P. Will, 
we know we seen and and I'm not asking Pete Will to go out here and be an all star this season. We just want him to be a little bit more aggressive because we seen him attack the basket and dunk on niggas' heads. Yeah, we just need that. Yeah, for sure. I see you, nephew. I'm just me speaking from my from my point of view. I don't like he just trying like to throw a trying to trying to throw a curve in there. Oh, bro, I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> bro, you ain't just finna have me just sitting out here for you can look good all game, bro. You got can, I, can I get four five possessions, bro? Get out in transition. You probably get some. He's talking about running for it. <laughs> you talking about, man? Get out and run for it. You oh, want to eat, go run. That's <laughs> it. For real, though. But, hey, that's the end of that one. That's wow. the end of this episode. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> you got anything left? Hey, man, they, they giving out big numbers, bro. I should go ahead and try to make my comeback, nephew. Let's see if I can get there. At least get, like, a meal a, a year or something. Windy City Bulls doing tryouts. You can oh, go bro, I should go, bro. I you can go keep... beat Marco 2.0. I'm going to kill Carly Jones right now, Joe, on the court, <laughs> But that's it from us, man. Let us know down below how y'all feeling about that Zach Levine contract now. And also, let us know how y'all feeling about Grant Williams. He, could, he was almost a Chicago Bull, but the Bulls weren't aggressive enough in his words. So make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, shake the notification bell, and share this with somebody so we can get to that 4K. This is another episode of Shy Boys Podcast. I'm back. Bobby, that's C-Dub. We're going to catch y'all on the next one for show. Come on, yeah. Gang.